Hi friends! If you click to check out the new Sonya G Kiyaki Holiday Mini Brush Set, then please keep on watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. A huge congratulations to Sonya G. First of all, let me start by saying thank you to her for coming on Behind the Beauty. I will make sure to post that video down below. It was an incredible interview. Just getting some insight on Sonia G's brush genius imagination, finding out that she has like 5,000 brushes in her brush castle, and she also provided some sneak peek details of her holiday releases this year. One of them being that beautiful microfiber towel that I bought two of. I did. In addition to a limited edition mini brush set, as well as her limited edition brush holder that just looks exquisitely crafted. I have to get that one. I missed out on the first one because it was a lot of money and that's, listen, I understand why. Deservedly so. It just didn't fit the budget at the time, but this time it does. I'm, I'm buying the cranes, okay? Some quick details on this brush set. It is slated to release on Wednesday, December 9th, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard. That is 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll make sure to include those links down below. They are affiliated and I do earn a commission if you choose to click them. So thank you in advance. The whole set retails for $125. Now, if it's your first time encountering Sonia G brushes, you might think that is a lot of money. Sonia G brushes are made in Japan. Not only are the bristles hand bundled, but this is a very special wood. And with that said, I'm heading over to her blog post on sweetmakeuptemptations.com where she just beautifully outlines the process of the Kiyaki brush set, her inspiration behind it. I will definitely link that down below so you could take a look, but I quickly wanted to read the standout details here. I love little brush sets, Sonia says. Me too. Especially when they are unique, beautiful, and functional. With that vision in mind, I work with Japanese artisans to create this limited edition Kiyaki brush set with short handles. To give you an idea, I mean, the brush is my hand size, and I don't have the hugest hand. So keep in mind, I want to give you a little bit of perspective. In fact, why don't I show this up against a, for instance, pro brush from Sonia. This is from her pro series, the Inochi Gay. And you can see from the bottom of the handle, the brush comes up mid ferrule of the pro brush. So that kind of gives you an idea of what to expect because sometimes I understand it's very hard to tell online, but she does provide photographs because Sonia is amazing with providing some comparison photos and details. This set feels so special to me because it features Fude craftsmanship paired with traditional Japanese woodworking craftsmanship for the handles. This is the exciting part. The handles are made of Kiyaki Zelkova Serata, which is native from Japan. It is a slightly harder wood and requires requires a longer drying period of one to two years compared to other Japanese woods. It is considered a strong and high grade wood and since a very long time has been used for the construction of temples, shrines, high grade Buddhist altars, and lacquer wares. Shiki. Kiyaki wood is also used for high quality furniture such as special tables or counters. It's famous for its beautiful grain and for the fragrance coming from the oils contained in the wood. So not only are we getting Sonia's beautiful genius in terms of the designs, but the fact that she's including a wood very traditional to the Japanese region that it's so heavily used in a lot of their spectacular architecture. So it's just like, she's giving us the full package, okay? That's what I so appreciate about Sonia G, that whatever she releases is going to have a purpose. It's gonna have a little bit of history and then a little bit of her and her love for Fude. The black matte brass ferrule pairs extremely well with the black details of the Kiyaki grain while the logo remains the usual light brown color as it matches the elegance of these handles. And here she features a lot of her wood handle brushes from her collection. Oop, she she's showing the she's showing the Kazan. Let me bring them over, why don't I? Here is a close-up of the matte ferro with her beautifully colored logo here. And on the back, you have the brush name. This is the mini base. And of course, you have where it's made from in Japan, right up near the ferro. I, like, I can't, these are so cute. I could wear them as earrings. 
I could if I wanted to. The Kazan series brushes are made with Granadilla wood and it's actually a wood native to South America and if put up against the Kiyaki wood, you see that the Granadillo has more of a red hue to it whereas the Kiyaki wood is more of like a, a deeper, richer brown and even the details of the wood vastly different, right? Despite them being wood, you could just see the changes in texture and pattern between the two. And in going into why she designed the brushes that she did, Sonia says here, the brushes for this set had to be brushes that we love to have with us, especially when we are on the move and that help us achieve the biggest range of looks with the most types of products. I did my best to aim for this. Started with the eye brushes. It says here, with regards to the eye brushes, the ones that I believe to be very functional, that work so nicely as a team and that I always love to have have with me are the flat definer, yes, the mini booster and the jumbo blender from the Sky series. These right here, now these shapes are featured in her Sky set, but they're dyed goat hair, whereas these are undyed. I'm happy that she did that because you can use undyed goat hair with both powder and liquid. And as she explains, they have been bundled with white undyed psycho goat bristles that you could use them also with cream products if you wish to. Yes, Sonia, thank you so much. She goes into each brush and what they are designed to do I will quickly hold their counterpart up. So this is the Sonya G Jumbo Blender. Up against is Jumbo Blender counterpart from the Sky series. Now I think they are supposed to be the same brush. For some reason, I think the one from the Kiyaki set, the bristles look a little longer, but I do recognize they have that same fluff to them, that same brush girth. If you want to see them side by side, in terms of the difference in length, that's how it stands. The mini booster from Kiyaki and the mini booster from the Sky series. I love mini booster. It is such a versatile little blender where you could just take it into the crease, especially if you have smaller hooded eyes. I especially love this brush to pull shadow along the lower lash line. And to know that Sonia included an undyed version of the mini booster is just so helpful. Now, I don't know if it's because this is undyed that it has a little more softness to it. Maybe softness is not the right word. There's softness here. Oh, look at me, I look like a crazy person. This has a little more pushback. So you could still successfully pull color across the lid and you most definitely can blend it on the outer corner and wherever else you like to on the eye. And I could always message her and ask her and I could confirm down below. But I do think there's a little more movement here in the dyed version versus the undyed version. And here is flat definer, Kiyaki, flat definer, sky set. I feel like the Kiyaki version comes to more of a point versus the one found in the Sky set. They're both very soft and I think ideal to pull shadow along the top lash line, which is something I did a lot. Ever since I introduced this brush into my collection, I felt I never did shadow wings before because I didn't have the right brush to accomplish that look. But ever since, again, I used the flat definer, it just has been miraculously easy to achieve. And this, I feel no different. And now because this is undyed goat hair, I could go in with the Natasha Denona Chromium liquid shadows. Just go rah and be done. I mean, we're doing that. We're doing it. Now for the face brushes. Sonia says, I was aiming for high versatility with these two little face brushes. They are not part of the current permanent collection. We got new shapes, fam. The mini base, hold on, let me go, let me get it. Look at the mini base. The mini base can be used with creams liquids and powders. It is bundled with natural bristles, Sokoho goat hair, and synthetic fibers, PBT. I was worried, I was worried, because when I saw this, I thought it was like, let's say if we were to go into her master face, for instance, from Sky, that it was a mixture between dyed and undyed goat hair. And because the dyed goat hair was present in the bundling, oh no, you can't use it with creams and liquids. But why would I ever doubt Sonia? Why? Why? If it's gonna be a travel set, and she clearly mentioned that in the introduction of the collection in regards to the description of it, that if you're gonna use this from face to eye and it being as comprehensive as possible and you using as many products, shame on me. Let me keep on reading, Sona, you the best. This specific blend of bristles and density can handle foundation. Although it's a small brush, 
It is. We're going to take a look at some of the other ones I have. It can be used for the entire foundation application and will blend beautifully, but it will take more time compared to a bigger face brush. Understandable, don't mind at all. On the other side, the benefit is that it is also more versatile and can be used for cream blush cream contour or to diffuse concealer if you like to apply on a larger perimeter. The midi base can also be used with powder products. I use this brush to set my foundation with powder or as a mini buffer. I can't wait. A couple of other brushes that I have in my collection that mimic this sort of flat kabuki type of design is my Chikohoto F02 brush. This is made out of fox hair, definitely cannot use with creams and liquids, but in comparison to the Kiyaki mini base, you see that it's a lot larger. It's actually more flat and Sonia's is a little more domed. The reference number 17, my apologies for it being so dirty, actually smaller than Sonia's mini base and it's more of a flat top. This is undyed goat hair so I definitely can use it with creams and or liquids as well as powder if I choose to. But this doesn't have as much movement as Sonia's brush but because Sonia included synthetic fibers in with the natural hairs it's not going to absorb as much product as the refer one as this is made all with undyed goat hair. And here's Chikohoto's Z series contour brush. My apologies, I don't have the number. I was intrigued when I saw this brush online. I thought it would have been a lot bigger. And look how small it is in comparison to Sonia's brush. You know, it's funny, I really don't use this brush a lot because I haven't found a place in my routine for it. I definitely just punch in contour, but again, it's so soft that I could definitely blend it out. But nice to have a little more movement here. You see, although it's a kabuki style brush, it has beautiful flow. And again, as Sonia mentioned, will be lovely for powder application. Up next, we have the classic Face. Classic Face is a brush to use with powder products. It is bundled with dyed and undyed natural bristles, Psycho Goat. Okay, so this very much likens to what I had showed earlier, the Master Face, as well as the good old Face Pro, as well as the Mini Cheek and the Detail Pro. So these are all of Sonia's dyed, undyed mixture of brushes and wonderful for her to include one of those mixtures here in her mini set. Oh, this, this little guy. I can feel the versatility. Bam, I can. This brush is the perfect size for the one brush for all powder product. It's small enough for blush application, big enough for bronzer application, and also can handle highlight or contour application. I cannot wait to get into this demo. The shape is simple, yet quite unique. It has an oval ferrule, yes, but it's slightly pinched here. Let's see what she says. It has an oval ferrule, but when washed, it blooms to an airy, generous dome surface at the top. So it provides enough control with sheer products and prevents the harsh edges when applying more heavily pigmented products. So freaking thoughtful. Oh yes, this will fit beautifully into the hollows of the cheeks and again, you could just place the highlighter right here on the edge of the brush and just knock it right on to the cheekbones right there. And also great for the under eye, no less. Now that we have those beautiful details out the way, why don't you come in a little closer for this demo? <gasps> That's enough. All right, fam, I'm living dangerously. As I'm filming this, it's 20 minutes away from a live IG class I have to teach on middle splits. <laughs> so I'll keep a look at the time, but I might have to get off camera, teach, and come back, and that might mean the lighting could be different. I am terribly excited. I thought the mini base could only be used with powder products, so I pulled out my Shiseido, but I'm gonna pull out the Suku. Mixing 040 and 035 together. My little, little, little more, I got a lot to cover here. And actually, I'm gonna place just that first. I always overshoot, but it's, it's okay. Here we go, are we ready? Oh, yes. Now, keep in mind, if you are wearing sunscreen, to do this on top of the sunscreen is not ideal because you will move it around. Since I don't have any on, I am doing the whirl and twirl. However, you could be extra gentle and press it on. Immediately, I recognize how soft this is. It doesn't feel stabby as a lot of kabuki brushes can feel. You can strike the foundation on again. You can buff it on like so. And man, oh man, this is what well, I wouldn't, how could I expect anything else? And I agree that the small size, although yes, you might have to spend a little extra time applying your foundation, 
but in no time at all will you apply it to your whole face. Incredibly elegant, incredibly thoughtful in design, not too packed, but not too loose either. And you'll get enough product on your skin for the level of coverage you're looking to achieve. If you don't want a lot, then don't apply a lot because remember, half of this is made out of synthetic fibers, which don't absorb products. So if you're leaning more towards a natural finish in your foundation, look to be a little more conservative with how much foundation you do use. That is absolutely perfect. 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 <laughs> Suku concealer in 12. I usually mix 15 and 12, but because of the time, I'm going straight in with this shade. Again, going in with the mini base and oh, just punch it on right there. Again, such a unique shape because it's not so flat that it just fits bluntly under the lash line. You have a little bit of of shape there to nudge it right under the lash line and get into that small crevice where sometimes tough to tackle with a brush like this. And because she mentioned contour, going in with number 18 right here, da 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 dot 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 because we got we got to check it out fam i'm giving the brush a wipe in between applications and let's go in oh it's perfectly sized for the hollows fam look how beautiful that is i'm so happy right now this is such a well thought out set i can't even you could swirl and twirl you could strike i like to punch in my contour products just so i could have control over the application that's pretty much it for me that's as much as i go but absolutely beautiful we're doing all the cream complexion products fam we're putting them in the base to this chantecaille's chic gelée and the liquid lumiere i'll go in with the gelée first this is in the shade vibrant placing some on the back of my hand i like to warm it up first so i'll you know do a little zhuzh zhuzh wipe the brush and take some of that here then just punch it on this size is absolutely perfect like, I cannot take it. Not too small, but not too big either. So if you don't like a lot of blush, if you don't even like to apply blush, you could just skip this step altogether. Liquid Lumia in Brilliance, one of my f most favorite liquid highlighters. In addition to the Suku one, their liquid highlighter, as well as their highlighter stick, which can only imagine go that 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 on the stick, that too with the Surat. But I'm just gonna take some from the back of my hand and punch it on right there. Now, you don't have to use the mini base at all for highlighter. In fact, sometimes I just use my finger. I could do it on this side and tap it on the cheekbone. But sometimes if you have too much, I'm sure you have the mini base on hand, you could just use that brush to buff the edges, right? A reason why I love the Chantecaille is that it just melts beautifully into the skin. It doesn't escape from you. You have some control over that application, but again, you have this on standby to melt all the products together successfully and everything just looks so seamless and blended. And this could be your routine, fam. If you just love cream products, if you love that glow, that look to the skin, oh my gosh amazing however i do want to go in with the classic face to apply some powder sonia said we could use the mini base to apply our powder but i like to use a brush that's a little more free flowing because i don't want to move what i had applied no other than suku's sheer loose powder in with the classic face let's start here under the eye i think i could get a really nice fit under the lash line with the classic not too big not too small just enough and then let's start to whip it around the rest of the face look how it moves so guaranteed you will not move your cream products whatsoever it flows beautifully on the skin it sets it perfectly again without compromising what you applied prior it's just so lightweight and beautifully soft look at that just easy no fuss no muss okay 102 cheek palette i cannot wait let's put on some highlighter just as sonia promised it's small enough to get it there on the cheekbones but not so big it's going to just be too big just right here 
absolutely perfect. I'm just picking up a little bit at a time for some control. So to save time and not get up and grab a bronzer, I know I should have done that before, forgive me. I'll actually just drop into this shade here with the classic face and just hit it right on top of the Suku number 18. This is perfectly shaped. It's pinched, but still fluffy to just get that beautiful blend and to buff the powder perfectly. Like I'm fully, fully confident that if I was out and about, you know, pre-quarantine style, I could rely on this brush set to do it all. Most definitely. Right here on the Right here on the temple. Base is done with mini base and classic face. I am just completely blown away. I cannot, I, I can't get over it. So happy with how my complexion and cheek products turned out. So with that said, and let me go teach this live. We'll come back to demo the eye brushes and round up the thoughts. See you in a bit. All right, I turned on my glam core. I think, you know, we got the natural light perfectly for the complexion and cheek step as I prefer natural light for those products. Eyes though, I could use the artificial. I use the artificial. All right, time to get into these mini eye brushes. And you know what? I haven't used the Suku Holiday Palette since my first impression. I know, so terrible. There have been so many products from that time. I just try to, you know, use as many things as I can. So let's hop into this. I'm trying to remember the looks I did so I don't repeat myself. But you know what, let's go in with the Jumbo Blender and start with this terracotta shade that look at you trying to start this without primer. Excuse me, no other than the Hourglass Jumbo Blender. Again, one of my most favorite tapping that on the outer part of the lid. And I quite enjoy the Jumbo Blender for blending. <laughs> you turn the brush on its side and you could whip that color across the crease. And you could also use circular motions to blow it out a little bit if you like, if you prefer that blend, or you could keep it tighter, closer to the lash line. Just to compare, let's take the Sky Set Jumbo Blender and place it on the outer part of the lid in the same manner. And then we'll start to whip it through. They feel very similar, they do. I'm happy to report, however, that because again, as I mentioned before, Sonia made these with undyed Psycho goat hair bristles, which allows the brush to be used with creams and liquids. So if you love using cream products on the lids, you could take the Jumbo Blender, which makes me very happy because there were moments where I wanted to use my Sky Set Jumbo Blender with let's say like a cream product from Sydney Grace or what have you. And you're like, don't do it, you're gonna ruin the brush. I got Dragonfly on standby. I don't know how I'm gonna incorporate it, you know, we're gonna figure it out. Mini Busta with this dark brown shade. Start tapping that on the outer part of the V. I'm happy she went with the Mini Booster so smaller eyes can still have a blender brush that's designed for that tight crease space. But it's so soft. Even though I felt in the beginning it had a little more pushback than the original Sky Set Mini Booster, it still moves really nicely across the skin. If you want more shadow, take the bigger brush go back into that dark brown shade and tap on more. And know to wiggle back and forth. That will ensure you pick up the most product because if you do this, sure you could get product if it's maybe a powder formula, but with baked gel -A formula, such as the one here in the Suku Holiday Eye Palette, is best to go back and forth. And I'm not getting any fallouts. The color is staying on the brush until I deposit it on my skin. Even though it's small, I could still use it to buff the very edges of the shadow. It's right here. And of course, my favorite task for the mini booster is to pull shadow on the lower lash line. I mean, like, absolutely perfect. It's the perfect shape to give me some haze, but for it to not get crazy, you know? You could also use the Jumbo Blender in the same manner. It's a little thick, but you can make it happen. I think I'm gonna go in with the fun red shade, Jumbo Blender, and hit the lid with it. Again, back and forth you go to pick up the most product. That's so pretty. Shantikai was so nice to send me their holiday 2020 set. Look at this bag. They sent me the new zebra and crane shades that I'm like, oh my gosh. So I want to use the zebra one because this is a rose gold shade. Just look how beautiful that is. I don't even want to use it, okay? Jumbo blender, aim with the rose gold, but more on the inner part of the lid. Again, back and forth to get the most color and just hit the inner lid with it. And it just has the 
most beautiful scatter effect. If anything, you know, you still have your fingers on the go. Of course, make sure you wash them, all right, before you start applying eyeshadow with them. If you want more impact from these types of textures, these baked textures, then just use your finger and then go back in with the brush to just feather the edges and refine the blend. And with the crane shade, I think I wanna hit the lower lash line with it. I know I already applied the dark brown, but ooh, this is a smoky look. Just, oh, uh, matches my nails. Mini Bosta right here. Oh yeah, a nice, beautiful haze of color. This will also just be devastatingly beautiful all over the lid. Pick it up with the jumbo blender, place it on the lid, carry it through the crease and be done. In fact, I'm actually placing this on the outer part of the lid. Yes, I'm covering the dark brown satin matte from the Suku palette, but I just, I just need to bring this shadow in. It just has to happen. Using the jumbo blender to whip the edges. Now, Mini definer, we're going in with the chromium, baby. I'm placing some on the back of my hand first. And again, just so seamless. Look how small this brush is, but it stays together. It doesn't splay when you start applying the liquid, when you start applying the cream shadow. The brush remains compact and that just allows for better control. Now do remember, and not just with this brush, but with any, when you're using it with cream and liquid products to wipe it right away because you don't want the product to dry down hard on the bristles and therefore be tougher to wash out. Incredibly simple to build this wing with. Go bloom, 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 bloom. And I can't even imagine how insanely simple it will be using this brush to apply just powder along the lash line for a little bit of smoke. Yes. Yes, and yes. I'm taking Wayne's Deep Amethyst. So I like this color because I wanna create a little more depth here on the outer part of the lower lash line. But what I'm gonna do is use the flat definer to just further smoke it out. And you could take whatever you have from the back of your hands, pick it up with your brush, and just pow, place some on the top lash line, not necessarily covering up the chromium shade. You could certainly just add a little bit there to, to create more intensity on the base of it. And I'm just taking it from the back of my hand and just pulling it slightly under Dragonfly, just a little bit. You could take your jumbo blender or you could take your mini booster. I'm taking the jumbo blender to do a finishing buff here. Hopping back into the Suku palette with this beautiful rose gold shade, flat definer, and popping that on the brow bone. Look how perfect this is for the brow bone highlight. I know, I ruined the brush because I'm so overzealous and I wanna use these brushes with everything, but they're workhorse brush for a reason. I think that's what Sonia had in mind that the possibilities are endless in terms of what mediums you can use most of these brushes with. Inner corner, what are we doing? Excuse me. Same rose gold shade, maybe a little bit of the truer, more yellow gold, same flat definer, and hitting the inner corner with those shadows. Yeah, same thing here. I like a flat brush that's small, but I could still use it to apply a highlighter to the inner tear duct width because then, I could sweep it up and further blend that color onto the ones that are on the lid. Like here, I could just bring it up a little higher and it fits beautifully here on the inner part of the eye. Actually, you know what? Let me take this orchid shade, same brush, and hit the inner part of the eye. Just, you know, give it a little pop -a pop Beautiful, we like with the crane shade. My gosh. And if you got any fallout, you just take your classic face and whip it away. All right, supply some lashes and I'll be right back. Lashes are on. We have the Lisa Eldridge True Velvet Lipstick in Velvet Blush with the liner in Blush. Chandelier Lashes in Lady Grace. And here is a look at the lids. And here's a wide shot of the look. What can I say, fam? I am not surprised by 
how beautifully exquisite Sonia's brushes are. Everything from the construction to the performance, just again, the thoughtfulness of these designs and the fact that she truly produced a mini brush set that can successfully take you from face to eye in the most confident way. Again, she designs brushes so that the user can feel confident and even, dare I say, motivated to apply their makeup because you're in good hands when using Sonia G brushes, okay? You have your complexion down, whether you want to use powder products or liquids and creams. You have your cheek products down, again, whether cream or powder. By far, my most favorite, the mini base. And I know, fam, these are only sold as a set. I, I'm sure some of you are like, I just want that mini base. Who knows what Sonia has in mind down the road. Maybe we'll see more synthetic blends from her. And man, when we do. But I'm confident that she's not, she's not done. Okay, I think she got something in the plan books. I don't, I know nothing, okay? I'm just saying based on this release and how successfully I was able to apply my makeup, my foundation, my concealer, uh, both under the eye and on the hollows of the cheeks, the cream blush, the cream highlight, all those tasks were just beautifully done with the mini base and the classic face. The classic face is a bomb brush. I don't mind having that on a full size handle, but I can appreciate and respect respect the smaller size because again, I think these designs just yield that on the go, no fuss, no must experience with a travel set of brushes. Cause travel sets can be tricky. They don't have everything you're looking for. And when it's like that, you just, you know, do what you have, right? You don't have to just do what you have with this Kiyaki set. You have it all. You have the synthetic blend, you have the undyed and dyed blend, and you have the undyed hairs for the eye brushes that just, that's the most perfect scenario. I wanna be able to use powder products and cream products when it comes to eyeshadow. Even if you use one eyeshadow, maybe it's a cream product, and if you only have dyed goat hair or squirrel hair or something, you will ruin those bristles because they're not meant to be used with cream and liquid products. But the fact that she made Jumbo Blender, Flat Definer, and Mini Booster with undyed goat hair is like the best. It just opens up the spectrum of opportunity for you to use more products with this small holiday set. And speaking of the holidays, since we're in, you know, buying gifts and whatnot, mini brush sets, I think, are one of the most ideal gifts to buy simply because you have like a curated set from a designer you love, five brushes that are gonna take you through the gamut of your face and eye routine. Beautifully simple, but elevated. Any products you use these brushes with, it's just going to be an excellent application. I mean, nothing more, nothing less. And if you're still not too sure about the price, keep in mind, again, Fude brushes are handmade in Japan. Anything that's handmade will automatically warrant a higher price tag than items that are machine made. The wood is also high grade. The bristles are high grade. And if you know someone that was eyeing Sonia G brushes, but they weren't too sure, this is a great opportunity for a gift. And I think that would just open the floodgates for them also. Like no matter what Sonia G decides to release thus far, they're gonna get it, okay? So that is my take fam. Yes, this is the first time I am using them today because I wanted to wash them yesterday, take the before photos, show you how they look like fluffed out post-wash, do the demo on camera, and I am just beyond pleased with this set. Congratulations to Sonia G on her first small mini brush set. I think it will be a complete success. Can't wait to find out what you think down below. Let me know if you're looking to grab it, if you're passing, what have you. And until then fam, that is... All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you in here again with another review tutorial, brush extravaganza video, monthly favorites or nightly life chit chat. Take care and I'll see you again soon. And we're back. Lighting's a little, let me see what we can do here with this aperture. Oh.